Base builders on YouTube, including myself, typically give the cost of their builds in terms of stone, metal fragments, HQM, etc. So you have an idea how much effort you need to spend to build and maintain the base. However, if builds use different mixes of materials, the cost can sometimes be difficult to compare. For example, imagine you had built a 2x2 for 4.2k stone with an upkeep of 434 stone. To double its durability, you could either add a layer of stone walls or upgrade everything to sheet metal. The stone version would cost 13.8k stone and have an upkeep of 1.9k stone per day. The sheet metal version would cost 2.8k frags and have an upkeep of 289 metal per day. So if we just look at the numbers, the metal base seems to be 5 times cheaper to build and 7 times cheaper to upkeep. However, since they use different materials, how do these numbers truly compare? The true cost for everything in Rust is your time. Whatever you want to farm, you need to invest time playing the game. Thus the real question would be, how much time do you have to invest to obtain 2k stone versus 289 metal fragments every day? The best proxy we have for time is scrap, as scrap comes closest to a universally accepted currency in Rust. But what would be the appropriate scrap prices for the different materials? One clue can be found at the outpost. In one of the vending machines you can buy 1000 wood for 20 scrap, that's 50 wood per scrap, 1000 stone for 50 scrap, that's 20 stone per scrap, and 250 metal fragments for 50 scrap, that's 10 frags per scrap. Judging from this price list, Facepunch implicitly considers the value of metal fragments twice as high as the value of stone and five times as high as of wood. Going back to the earlier example with these prices in mind, the stone 2x2 would cost 690 scrap to build and 95 scrap per day to upkeep. The metal 2x2 would cost 280 scrap to build and 28 scrap per day to upkeep. Which is still 2.5 times cheaper to build and 3.4 times cheaper to upkeep. However, there are a few issues with these valuations, as they are inconsistent, incomplete and not reflecting my personal experience. First, let's look at the inconsistency. If you invest 300 scrap to buy wood, you go home with 15k wood. However, if you would use the 300 scrap to buy stone, and then at the same vending machine convert it to wood at a rate of 500 wood per 150 stone, you go home with 20k wood instead. This means buying stone first and converting it to wood gives you 66.6 .6 instead of 50 wood per scrap. Second, Face Punch implicitly considers metal fragments exactly two times as valuable as stone. Let's look at the data to see whether that makes sense. Stone nodes yield 1k wood, metal nodes yield 600 ore, which is a little bit more than half. For the sake of the argument, let's ignore the fact that metal ores are harder to find in some biomes and instead assume that the value of 600 metal ore is equivalent to 1k stone, meaning 50 scrap. However, we still need to convert the ore to frags. Assuming the use of a small furnace, it requires 1k wood to smelt it. The cost of 1k wood would add an additional 20 scrap. Therefore, the cost of acquiring 600 metal fragments would equate to 50 plus 20 equals 70 scrap. This would increase the cost of metal fragments, as this way, one scrap only buys you 8.6 instead of 10 metal fragments. To give you an idea how this relates to stone, 1k metal fragments would therefore be 116.6 scrap which makes it 2.33 times more expensive than 1k stone, not 2 times. To correct for this, the vending machine at the outpost should give 215 frags for 25 scraps, rather than 250. Third, the data is incomplete, as no vending machine sells high quality metal. Thus, we need to use another proxy. If you farm metal nodes with a metal tool, you'd get 2 HQM ore per 600 metal ore. This would put high quality metal at a ratio of 1 to 300. If we take the price of 10 frags per scrap, this would buy 1 30th or 0.0333 of an HQM per scrap. Or to put it differently, 30 scrap would buy 1 HQM. Another proxy could be the components sold at Outpost, because you can buy them for scrap and recycle them into HQM as well. Sheet metal provides the best deal. You can buy one for 30 scrap and recycle it into 1 HQM, 100 metal fragments and 8 scrap. Since you got 8 scrap back, you paid only 22 scrap. Furthermore, following the price at the vending machines, the 100 metal fragments could be considered worth another 10 scrap. Subtracting these numbers, you effectively need to pay 12 scrap for one high quality metal. This means that one scrap equates to 0.0833 HQM. This is much closer to my intuition. 
With these factors in mind, the best evidence-based estimate is that 1k wood equals 15 scrap, 1k stone equals 50 scrap, 1k metal frags equals 116 scrap, and 100 HQM equals 1200 scrap. If we apply the updated metal fragment cost to the earlier example of the upgraded 2x2, we find that instead of 280 scrap for the build and 28 scrap for the daily upkeep, the metal upgrades now end up at 325 scrap for the build and 33 scrap for the daily upkeep. This makes the metal upgrades still 2.1 times cheaper to build and 2.8 times cheaper to upkeep. While these differences are not as pronounced as just comparing the raw numbers, it's still a good indicator that assuming the abundance of both materials, you should choose to upgrade the base to sheet metal. I'm saying assuming the abundance of both, because metal fragments are used for crafting so many other things that it's usually much scarcer than stone. Thus, it might still make sense to go with a stone upgrade if stone is abundant while metal fragments are constantly lacking. Beyond comparing design alternatives, these scrap prices give us the means to compare the cost and upkeep of whole base designs. Let's look at the build cost and daily upkeep and scrap for some of my most popular builds. The original Frustrator V2, the most well-known main base on my channel, would cost the equivalent of about 5k scrap for the build and 1k scrap for the daily upkeep. Equipped with these numbers, let's use it as a baseline for other popular designs from my channel. The Aggravator, being designed to be a cheap version of the original Frustrator V2, turns out to be only 15-20% to cheaper, with about 4k scrap for the build and 875 scrap for the daily upkeep. The Phoenix V2 would cost pretty much half of the original Frustrator V2 in terms of both build and upkeep. Thus Bunker ends up costing about as much, a bit less for the build, a bit more for the upkeep. The Multi-ITC Grand Frustrator would set you back the equivalent of about 12,900 scrap for the build and 2,400 scrap for the daily upkeep. So it's only about two and a half times more expensive to upkeep this base. On the other hand of the spectrum, the Thrifty Scott would be the equivalent of 321 scrap for the build and 53 scrap for the daily upkeep, which shows you a little bit about the efficiency of having multiple small bases. What we can now further do with these numbers is to compute an efficiency metric. Internally, I started to divide the scrap cost by the optimal number of rockets required for a full rate. Dividing the upkeep cost of 1k scrap by 45 tells us that you need to invest 24 scrap a day per rocket protection, which is a pretty decent result. Assuming a full rate cost of 41 rockets, the aggravator beats this result as you invest only 21.3 scrap a day per rocket protection. The Phoenix V2 with 18 rockets for the full rate ends up with 28.7 scrap per rocket protection, showing that the build is slightly less efficient. Das Bunker with its 31 rocket protected core is actually surprisingly inefficient, coming out at 37.8 scrap per rocket protection. Assuming that the full rate of the Multi-TC Grand Frustrator would take at least 100 rockets, the base, despite its size, matches the efficiency of the original Frustrator V2 with 23.8 scrap per rocket protection, which illustrates the insane efficiency of multi-TC designs. All of them are beaten hands down by the Thrifty Scott. Assuming 8 rockets worth of protection, it comes out at an incredible 6.6 .6 scrap a day per rocket protection. Of course, these numbers have their limitations. For example, you might object that it is impossible to put a fixed price on those different materials because their availability depends on a lot of factors. For example, in a remote snow region you might have an easy time farming stone and metal nodes but hardly any access to components and recyclers for high quality metal. And I do agree with you. Personally, I usually find stone to be the least of our concern. Stone is easy to find anywhere, does not require processing and is not used for much else besides building. Metal fragments, in contrast, are needed for virtually everything, they take time to prepare, and we're constantly short of them. And since wood is required for all kinds of items, as well as to smelt ore, we're also constantly short on wood as well. High quality metal is a bit of a mystery. Early in the game, we usually have very little spare HQM. However, sometimes during late wipe, we seem to end up with dozens of stacks of HQM and have no difficulty to maintain an upkeep of 100 HQM per day as a duo or trio. However, I still believe it's worth to attempt and make material costs comparable, as it helps so much with designing efficient bases. I know this was a very abstract and number-heavy video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. If not, no worries, videos like this will be the exception. 
May it enable the community to design even more efficient bases. Until then, Evil Wurst out.